on this part, we are going to create our first controller. And we are going to use this controller to manage the URLs of the users. Like, for example, to shorten a URL, but also when we want to display a list of the URLs. Now, to create a controller, all you need to do is that you need to go to the Solution Explorer. And then in the Solution Explorer here on the Controllers folder, I'm just going to right click and then add a controller. From the options that you get here on the left, make sure that you select MVC and then Controller. And then in here on the right, I'm going to select MVC controller empty because I want to create the controllers from scratch. I'll click add and I get this prompt where I need to define the controller name. I'm going to name this controller the URLs controller, URL controller. And then from the options that I get in here, I'll just make sure that I have selected the MVC controller empty. And I click the add button. And here an MVC controller, as you can see, is just a class. But for this class to be called a controller, it needs to inherit from the base class controller. And then by default, it does have this action or this action result, which has this name index. And then it returns a view. What this means is that if I run the app and then I want to render the default view on the URL, I need to type like the localhost and then slash URL and then optionally index. You did see on the previous part that in the Solution Explorer, we already had another controller, which was the home controller. And as you can see, the same way we have in here a class. So this controller is just a C sharp class. It has the name home controller. This is really important. So this is the name, but it needs to end with controller and it needs to inherit from the controller base class. Now, this one does have two actions, so index and privacy. And we did say that since it does have two actions that do return views, then in the solution explorer, in the views, you need to have a home folder which has two files with the name index and also privacy. Now, in our case, we have the URL controller, but we don't have a URL folder. And that is what we're going to create on the next part. But before we go to the next part, let us run the project. And we're going to see that here on the drop downs, you can select one of the profiles. And I'm going to select the HTTPS and then click the play button. You can see that the app is running by default to localhost and the port 7124. And if you go to privacy, you click this privacy in here, you can see that the URL is updated to home, which is the controller name. And then privacy was the action name. You can go back to home, which does send you to here, but you can also go to home and then index. It's basically the same thing. Now, on the upcoming parts, we are going to learn how we can modify the default route. So route is basically just the URL that you provide in here. And then when you press enter, based on how you have set up the route in your app, the app is going to redirect you to the right controller and then to the right action. By default, all the ASP.NET MVC apps have a default route. So if you go to Solution Explorer, and then go to program.cs and then scroll down in here to the bottom. You are going to see that in here we have this code which says app.map controller route, which is the default route because you can also create your own custom routes, which does have or the pattern is that it expects a controller. But if you don't provide any, the default controller name is going to be home. And it does also expect an action. But if you don't provide any, the default one is going to be indexed. And optionally, you need to also pass an ID. This part in here is what explains why when you run localhost and then also localhost home index, it does return the same thing. And it actually calls the home controller the index action, which does render the index view, which is 
in here, which is basically just a welcome message and some text within a p tag. 